Welcome back, true believers and all you spectacular Spidey fans, to another very exciting episode of Marvel's Spider-Man 2 101. And ever since the embargo lifted for the Marvel's Spider-Man 2 preview event, we have been getting non-stop brand new information about this game from a variety of sources, as well as Insomniac Games themselves. And in this video, I wanted to fully break down all the latest major updates that have been revealed for this game, primarily in regards to some very exciting news relating to the game's traversal system, a further insight towards Insomniac's vision when crafting this game's story, and last but not least are the official graphic modes that will be incorporated into Marvel's Spider-Man 2. So if you're someone like me who's beyond hype to learn more about this game, then definitely be sure to flip that like button and subscribe to the channel for any major Marvel Spider-Man 2 content in the future. Now to kick things off with what's probably the most exciting update for Marvel Spider-Man 2 is primarily in relation to the game's web swinging system, where I did just want to start off by saying, You trusted me. <laughs> now, for a bit of context, is that when I was actually able to fully get my hands on Marvel Spider-Man 2 during the PlayStation Preview event, I was only able to play through the game for a little over two hours, and try my best to fully test out everything that the demo had to offer, which specifically revolved around the game's story missions, as well as a good variety of open-world content. Which is why that I assumed during my time playing is that Insomniac didn't seem to add any more physics-based web swinging within the core traversal system, primarily in the case of including loop-de-loops, as well as running on the ground while holding onto a web line. And while the latter traversal mechanic is still up in the air as it stands right now, we did receive official confirmation from the advanced senior community manager at Insomniac Games himself of Aaron Jason Espinoza, where he did go on to answer on social media a fellow creator's question with All Father Media, where he asked Aaron, stating, Hey, I just saw a video of someone who got to play saying you can do loop-de-loops and whip around corners with your web. Can we get confirmation? Because the way he described it is amazing. And straight from the mouth of Aaron himself, he says, indeed, you can loop-de-loop -loop while diving and executing a swing. Just don't let go. You can also do a corner tether to make immediate quick turns. So, a hard left or right. And with a follow-up question from Spider-Man Shots, they went on to ask Aaron, we can do something like this? Where they then proceeded to post a gif of the opening swinging sequence from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and Aaron simply replies to this post with a solid yep. And I think the best possible way for me to fully describe my feelings about this is to simply let Toby take it from here. Alongside of a good majority of people wanting to see the Bully Maguire attire be featured in this game, I think it's safe to say that loop-de-loops are one of, if not the most highly demanded features that people wanted to see be incorporated within Marvel's Spider-Man 2. And what else is there to really say at this point other than, in Insomniac we trust? If you're a diehard Spider-Man gamer like me, you would know full well that the last time that we were actually able to execute a loop-de-loop -loop within an open-world Spider-Man game was all the way back in Spider-Man Web of Shadows, which at this point fully released nearly 15 years ago. So seeing the loop-de-loop -loop mechanic return within Marvel's Spider-Man 2 has been a long time coming. And after personally experiencing just how fast that you're able to fully traverse throughout Marvel's New York within this game, adding the loop-de-loop -loop mechanic on top of the already incredibly fast web swinging and the insanely fun web wings is going to be an absolute treat for Spider-Man fans. Not to mention that it sounds like Insomniac are once again taking from the Amazing Spider-Man 2's animation playbook in order to give players the opportunity to try and pull off some very quick turns, which will no doubt look insanely cinematic, but they'll surely come in handy by the time we're able to try and chase enemies throughout the city. And if it wasn't already obvious at this point, this only boosts my confidence even further in stating that Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is without a doubt going to have the best traversal system within any open-world Spider-Man game. And I for one just can't wait to dive back into it by the time the game releases. 
is. Now moving on from Aaron's post, I do want to highlight the recently released PlayStation blog, which does go over all the details and footage that was revealed from the Marvel Spider-Man 2 preview event. And while I already thoroughly provided my own personal insights about the demo that I got my hands on, there is one very intriguing section within this PlayStation blog post, which does closely analyze exactly what Insomniac's decision was when designing all the game's core villains. Where, as PlayStation originally posted, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Get to grips with the awesome power of the black suit in a new hands-on report. Swing over to the PS blog for details on symbiote powers, combat, story, PS5 features, and more. Where the section that stood out to me the most with this blog is where it states monsters and transformations. It also speaks to a thematic shift in Marvel's Spider-Man 2. The majority of villains in the first two games, as well as Marvel's Spider-Man The City That Never Sleeps narrative, were tech-based. Insomniac had purposefully leaned away from that for this sequel, looking to villains, to monsters, that can offer something different both narratively and gameplay-wise. Lizard and Venom are monstrosities that also tap into the theme of transformation. Even Mr. Negative, one villain making a return, embodies that not only in his own changes, but how he transformed Miles' life with the death of Miles' father, Jefferson Davis. And who better to tackle monsters than a hunter like Kraven? So not only is it extremely cool to learn about the design elements that Insomniac incorporated within Marvel's Spider-Man 2, but it's also very interesting to see exactly how thematically different this game is shaping up to be in comparison to Insomniac's previous Spider-Man titles. Primarily in the case of the tech-based villains, which I know some people weren't too big of a fan of when you look back at the City That Never Sleeps DLC, particularly within the case of Hammerhead, who pretty much went full-on killer cyborg by the end of the last DLC chapter. Even though I personally really enjoyed all the tech-based stuff that we saw with other characters like Dr. Octopus, as well as the Sinister Six members, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is planning to tell a completely different story, which does make sense from a design perspective to try and change things up. Especially after experiencing that one-on-one -on -one boss fight with the Lizard, and that incredibly captivating cutscene with Kraven the Hunter, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is easily shaping up to be the most captivating entry within Insomniac's Spider-Man franchise. However, that does make me wonder exactly what that means for the other villains' designs that we haven't fully seen yet, like that of the Wraith, Mysterio, and potentially quite a few others. But I guess we'll just have to cross that bridge when we come to it. And last but not least on this list of updates, I did want to highlight an article that was written by IGN, who not only provided an incredibly detailed preview about their own hands-on time with Marvel Spider-Man 2, but they were also able to interview quite a few of the game's developers, who went on to iterate a lot of very interesting gameplay details relating to the open world's design, the traversal system, as well as the game's separate graphic mode on the PlayStation 5, where, as IGN stated, no frame is left untouched, no character model is left with subpar lighting. Simply put, after playing for three hours, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 looks set to continue Insomniac's winning streak, whereas this article's author states is that I had the opportunity to ask the Insomniac team about how the PS5 SSD allowed them to accomplish instant travel and faster web swinging. Mike Fitzgerald, core technology director at Insomniac, clarified a few other details, including that the slingshots where Peter or Miles will pull back on two extended webs and catapult themselves forward, which sadly wasn't something that I was actually able to experience for myself during the gameplay demo, allows Spider-Man to travel three times faster than in the first game, and that characters are quote-unquote more detailed and lifelike that help them tell better more nuanced stories. Insomniac also noted that the DualSense controller is being used in some unique ways, like a mini game that we got to play in the reactor that will force you to pull the triggers with just enough pressure to move on to the next segment. And they outlined that the audio team took the time to develop the soundscapes for missions so that 3D audio can be fully utilized. Ambisonics and positional audio were used for objects in the scene, making for a more realistic audio experience, making for clearer indications of the player versus a target location. And what else is there to really say about that paragraph other than knowing that Insomniac is simply built different? Knowing just how fast you'll be able to go when using the slingshot mechanic in Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is simply going to be an absolutely unreal experience. And knowing that Insomniac are fully updating and upgrading all the other areas within this game is nothing short of a dream come true. Which now brings us to the moment of truth is to where we do receive more details 
details about the game's various graphic modes. The article iterates that more noticeably on the graphics side of things, Spider-Man 2 will only have two visual modes, visual and performance. The third mode was removed because no matter what you choose, ray tracing will be turned on by default. The baseline for performance mode will be what was previously referred to as performance ray tracing mode, with a better frame rate and resolution simply because the PS5 can handle it. Fitzgerald clarifies there's no mode in this game that has the ray tracing turned off because there's really no need for it. We figured out how to deliver what is the right Spider-Man picture and visuals and we want to make sure every player is seeing that. And as a bit of a bonus post from the community director at Insomniac Games himself of James Stevenson, he went on to quote tweet this IGN article by stating 30 FPS, 40 FPS, and 60 FPS all with ray tracing. And just to say it one more time for all the people in the back, in Insomniac we trust. For me personally, I always played on Performance RT mode whenever I go on to play Marvel Spider-Man Remastered or Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales on my PS5, considering that mode in the game was pretty much the best of both worlds. But now knowing that each mode will be equipped with ray tracing and you can choose between 30, 40, and 60 FPS truly provides the player with as much freedom of accessibility and options that they can choose from, and personally tailor their own unique Spider-Man experience in the way that they want to. But as for me, I for one am going to be using the performance mode as much as I possibly can. And I should mention that the demo that I was able to play for Marvel Spider-Man 2 was only set at the 30 FPS fidelity mode. So it is going to be a real treat to see exactly what this game looks and plays like while running in 60 FPS. And knowing that October is only a little over a month away, we won't have to wait for that much longer. But with all all that said everybody, that's the video I have for all you today, and please let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. What do you think of all these new crazy details for Marvel's Spider-Man 2? And which aspect of the game are you looking forward to the most? Let me know what you think, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy, and for more Marvel Spider-Man 2 videos like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, stay spectacular Spidey fans, and until next time, peace out.